Oh, hi, uh, you weren't supposed to see this. Excuse me, one second. Uh, you weren't supposed to see this either. I uh, gotta hide that. No, 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 wait, it actually was that one. Hollow Cure! Anime, Japanese cartoons, weird bread dog things, I don't understand. Ah, da, da, quiet, quiet, dear viewer, be careful, this is weeb country. But don't worry, stick with me, I'll protect you. Hollow Cure is a completely free, unofficial fan game featuring Hololive VTuber talents. What is a VTuber? Well, Dad, it's a girl who pays attention to me and listens to my problems when I give her money. No, it's not a prostitute! Hollow Cure is based on the girls of Hololive and the community surrounding them. It's similar to Vampire Survivor if you've heard of that, but with some big key differences. First, strafing. Second, stronger design focus on the characters. Everybody's got a starter weapon, special attack, and three skills that only they can use. Makes every character feel significantly different to play. Third, <laughs> The gameplay loop is easy to grasp and addictive. Pick the girl you want to play as and then use them to commit mass carnage on every cute character that approaches you. Level up from their demise, pick up an assortment of weapons and upgrades from leveling up, then combine your weapons into even more powerful collabs. Use everything you can to beat the stage mode's final boss. Or survive as long as possible in endless mode for bragging rights on your brain rot of choice. Somehow, this game doesn't cost anything. It's a fan project held together by a small, talented dev team, and it's evident to me that they put a lot of love and care into it. Hollow Cure is great. You should play it, and I want to tell you why. The plot of this game is easy enough to understand. VTubers became a phenomenon. They gathered a lot of fans on the internet. The fans were influenced and brainwashed by what's described as an evil force called Twitter.com, which convinces them to stop taking their medication. As punishment for their crimes, now the Hololive girls get to openly gun them down in the streets! They hurt! I mean, uh, save them. Save the fans. See these enemies? These are little representations of each Hololive member's fan base. Hololive encourages its members to use lots of theming, so Gargura, the shark themed one, has her fans represented as little shrimp guys. Mori Calliope portrays herself as a grim reaper, so her fans are skeletons. Amelia Watson is a time traveling detective, so her fans are shown as a fusion of her dog and the McDonald's character Grimace with a fat, juicy ass. At least, it was that way before the recent update. Now they've been rebranded as the slightly more tolerable to look at Alligator Trenchcoat Mafia. The game is an addition to the reverse bullet hell genre, a relatively new concept spawned from the popularity of vampire survivors. And just like how you don't have to understand Castlevania lore to enjoy vampire survivors, you don't have to understand VTuber lore to enjoy Hollow Cure. The references and memes are there for those who get them. The good gameplay stands on its own merits. A regular bullet hell, traditionally, is a game where you shoot and dodge at incoming enemies within a limited box area. These enemies will fill the entire screen with their projectiles. It may look like they're trying to kill your player character, but they're actually attempting to strike you down in real life, either by epileptic seizure or by setting your graphics car to flame, hopefully leading to a house fire. In reverse bullet hell, you have all the bullets. The enemies don't have epilepsy or houses to burn down though, but they don't have any ranged abilities either. Instead, they'll try to cut you off and physically swarm you. You're not restricted to a certain area in your movement either. Walk wherever you want. There are many characters to choose from in this game. You start out with a cast of five, then unlock the rest through playing a gotcha. A gotcha is one of those rip-off machines that you'll find in an Applebee's entrance. It's meant to entice children into spending ten dollars and quarters to get a sick stick-on tattoo of a wolf. Well, that's the American version anyway. I've lived in Japan, and usually their gotcha machines are in malls. Meant to entice children into spending ten dollars worth of yen to get a sick doge figurine. You buy characters in the game using only in-game currency you earn while playing, and you unlock new weapons through special challenges. I cannot imagine how tempting it was for the developer developer of this to not make the character gacha optionally cost real money a la Hearthstone packs. Bro, you could just earn the money in the game, bro. Just do your daily quest and play every day and get addicted, bro. You don't have to spend real money, bro. I've, I've only spent $300 on it this week. Bro, please, bro, I swear. But somehow they resisted the temptation and deserve respect for it. In the latest update, the devs were fatigued from hearing fans cry about how they can't get their favorite character. So they added in your very own tears as a currency upon 
upon receiving a duplicate. Get enough tears and you can buy whatever girl you want. But please keep in mind that crying to acquire women does not typically work outside of Hollow Gear. Instead, try gaslighting and verbal abuse. Works for me every time. I enjoy seeing how the devs represent each Hollow Live member's personality or well-known moments into their toolkit in Hollow Gear for their character. Some aspects are based on their personality, other things are based around famous moments they've had or themes of their VTuber persona. A few examples of my personal favorites. Amelia Watson is a good example of a Holocure loadout that has less to do with a theme and more to do with the person's personality. She's well known for playing FPS games and being a raging goblin. Why? She channels her gamer goblin rage into more damage and critical hits in Hollow Cure. She also has a dog, Bubba, who helps attack things for her. And then her special attack hits the lag switch she uses when she's behind in Apex Legends. Ceres Fauna is a nature spirit. And for me, she has the most interesting synergized toolkit in the game. Her weapon isn't incredibly consistent to use, but her real damage comes from her Guardian Tree skill. Whenever you receive healing, this skill spikes one of your fans straight through their prostate. Whisperer provides a form of constant healing, and thus a way to consistently activate the prostate spiker. Sapling makes enemies have a chance to drop a little healing plant more spikes, while also making you faster and stronger for a bit on pickup. Her special attack is a panic button that makes you invincible for 10 seconds and heals you repeatedly as well. Hakos Bales is a chaotic rat, and I don't know what it is, but she's up to something, I can feel it. Not because she's obviously a skaven, but because she's Australian. Best girl, I mean Ninomai Inanis, is one of my favorites for sure. Her skills are based around her theme more than anything else. She's a very gentle and easygoing type, but her theme is all culty Cthulhu Lovecraft stuff. So you get warlock-esque skills like slowing enemies down around you, gaining more damage the enemies are nearby, and converting enemies to your cult by way of the Ancient One, turning them into little octopus ghosts. In line with the Cthulhu-like theme, she uses tentacles as her weapon and as her special attack to push enemies away. Before the big update, she was also the only character who could survive infinitely in Endless Mode, which makes sense considering she is best girl. The gameplay itself is simple yet satisfying. Walk around, kill enemies with ridiculous weapons, take what they drop to get stronger. Holocure starts off slow, then rapidly turns into a self-defense exercise on not getting taken advantage of behind the local Yagu statue. Defeat all the swarming fans to receive experience used to level up. Leveling up gives you a choice of four randomly selected weapons, items, or skills, including ones you already have so that you can upgrade them. You have a limited amount of weapon and item slots, so choose wisely. You're rewarded with a Holozon box upon killing a boss enemy. These deliveries contain your idle salary as well as a new weapon, item, or upgrade. Upgrade. If you're lucky, and pray to your false idol of choice, the box may contain three items instead of one, or upon the new update, a super item. Weapons can be upgraded seven times by way of leveling up, or the loot box drops. Max out two compatible neutral weapons and you'll be given the chance to combine them into a collab. Getting the collab weapons is extremely satisfying because of the huge spike in power they give you. Also, something about them just scratches some sort of ADHD itch I have in my brain because these things are flinging fucking colors and shit all over the place. It also frees up a weapon slot during the combination, giving you a chance to grab a different new weapon. There's no limit to the amount of collabs you can have other than the normal weapon slot limit, so you can min-max to your heart's desire. You get your starter, plus five other weapons, and six items. Your starter weapon can't be combined with anything, but it's often very powerful on its own, and when you get it to max level, it becomes AWAKENED! and even more powerful than it was before. Aside from the starter weapons, here are some of the notable normal weapons that you can pick up during a run. Idle Song moves in a pattern vertically in both directions, up and down, to hit enemies. Glow Stick spins out and away from you to hit enemies, then spins back to you. These are based on the idle concerts that the VTubers of Hololive often perform, with the VTubers singing their idle songs, and the fans typically having glow sticks in the crowd to cheer them on. The Cutting Board creates a wall that repeatedly shoots out from behind you, an excellent defensive item. The cutting board weapon is stronger on certain characters like Gura and Ina. This is based on their striking resemblance to flat pieces of wood. The BL book rotates around you rapidly. It smacks enemies in the face with detailed pages of femboy thighs if they get too close. This is based... Continuing, Plug-type Asakoko plows itself into a nearby enemy's anus, delivering deadly drugs directly into them. I, I didn't make that up for a haha -ha funny sex joke, that's actually what that does. Holocure had a big update on September 9th, so what's the verdict on it?
<clears throat> it's fine. Actually, it's great. There's a ton of new content. It was just uh, playing the new stage made me realize that I forgot the upgrade system in this game exists, and the difficulty increase was kicking my ass. So there's that. More playable Hololive members, an extra stage, a harder version of a previous stage, new enemies and bosses, new weapons and items, and positive tweaks to existing ones. All excellent. I approve. Now for some minor gripes. How come I gotta walk around the table but the rice ball head guy don't, huh? Some characters are Mume that press X to delete everything on the screen. Others are Korone, who presses X to sporadically finger enemies. One of these is marginally more reliable, and I'll let you guess which one. That being said, though, KU and the rest of the dev team accomplished an insane goal with Holocure. Making a fan game that fills both the includes memes and the is actually a solid game criteria. I recommend you play this game whether or not you know anything about VTubers, streams, or any of that. Try it out, it is solid. Holocure is fantastic, and it's free. The link to the game is in the description, so go download it if you're interested. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. And a special thank you to the Shady Cabal of Elites and Connoisseurs financing these videos. Your blood money will not go to waste. I truly appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.